Hey all, so the, um, this is a new sort of series. I don't know if I'll, if I'll continue with this, but this is Kerbal Space Program, and I've been playing this for years now, years, since like 0 0.21 or 2.3 or something like that. And I've done all sorts of things with it. Um, a lot of mods installed here. What I'd like to show in this video is um, some of the functionality of Kerbal Operating System. I've done lots of Kerbal Operating System scripts, and this one is for a cruise missile, which is you have launch moment, then you cruise to a target, and then final descent in a controlled way with no intervention from me. The biggest challenge has not really been, well, yeah, I guess this is sort of part of the challenge of, of writing a good Kerbal operating system script, but a huge challenge has been the aerodynamics of the cruise missile itself. This version only works sometimes. Unfortunately, I need to add reaction controls. If I don't, then half the time it just goes berserk out of control. And this one almost does it. There's an earlier version that could not at all work without the reaction controls. Um, so I'm going to put this in now and we'll see how it works with, uh, so this is what, the advanced inline stabilizer. So let me just, uh, I'll pop off the warhead here, plop this on. I, I am, um, I have a mod here for reducing scale. Okay. Bam. Now the other major mod here is uh, BD Armory for weapons. So I do have a warhead on top, but I also have another mod with uh, World War II bombs and stuff. And there's a thousand po pound, essentially warhead in, you know, inside the whole thing. So now I'm going to resave this as four point. What am I doing? All right. Now this is laggy. I am convinced that KSP 1.2.2 has a memory leak somewhere because the longer you're playing it, the slower it gets. And it's really pretty annoying. And so you have to restart the game about once an hour. Uh, and I've been playing for two hours now. Anyway, so let's see how this works. So you launch. And for those of you who have played with um, Kerbal Operating System, you'll, you'll um, already be familiar with this. I may or may not publish the script. I think I probably will um, in the near future. Uh, depending on how well the, the video is received. Um, but I would prefer to perfect it such that I don't need an inline stabilizer to have the cruise missile do what it's supposed to do and not go insane. All right, load already. See, this is, this is the memory leak. Um, it's really slow now. Two hours of play, and this is the nonsense I have to put up with. All right, click on this, pull up the terminal. Switch to right run. This should work. All right. So phase one is the boost phase. You can see here. And when the solid fuel runs out, it'll pop that off because the clipping, it's a little bit wonky. I do have a Panther in here with full gimbal. This is only because I was experimenting with stabilizing the cruise missile without that stabilizer. Um, okay, anyway, so here's the here's display. We have here altitude. Um, script is currently set to have the cruise missile fly between 300 and, four, uh, and 475 meters. Uh, we have, so this is phase two. Here's the velocity, distance to target, heading, bearing, angle. And you can see it's decreasing max angle is also decreasing. So the faster this cruise missile goes, the smaller the angle that it can go up or down to avoid terrain. And that's because I've noticed um, with all sorts of uh, cruise missile designs, often if it goes up or down too sharply, it loses control, no matter if you have a stabilizer or whatever. And so I have this sort of little algorithm here uh, to determine how much it can angle up and down to avoid terrain based on its speed. Uh, and here's the angle error, and angle error refers to the offset between where it is and where it's supposed to be. Uh, angle, the actual angle that it's at, it's set to, by default, 3.5, so it's always nosing up a little bit so that it goes 
fairly level. Uh, you can still see that it's losing a little bit of altitude, and when it goes below the minimum altitude, it angles up. As you can see here, it's 5 degrees 4 to, okay, and then goes back to the default set of 3.5. Uh, the target is not far away. You can see there, 44, um, 44 kilometers away. And it is, uh, the, the current script is designed to do a pop-up. So when it's five kilometers out, it noses up to a point, uh, ooh, do I remember? 500, 700 meters? 700 meters directly above the target. And then when it's within two kilometers, it goes directly, well, not completely, but mostly directly at the target. It actually then targets a point about 20 meters above the target. I've discovered that because of drag and other kinds of things going on, if you tar if you aim directly at your target, it it falls short a little bit. Now, since it does have a thousand pound bomb inside, that usually doesn't make any difference whatsoever. But for a, you know sake of accuracy, if if the warhead's smaller, so I, you know I, once again I have this small warhead here, but I have a thousand pounds inside. And lag, 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 lag. Uh, right. Okay. So it's getting a little bit better the further away that I got from all the other stuff I've spawned out there. All sorts of. I, I'm really a big fan of Soviet and American Cold War era uh, aircraft, that kind of stuff. Um, I've done scripts for uh, putting stuff into orbit. Uh, spatial kind of stuff or just general lift scripts so you know it's really tedious to launch stuff into a nice orbit so I have scripts for that using a variety of different vehicles I have a script for maintaining um, hovering for a Harrier model that I have but I thought this would be you know the easiest and simplest one to showcase at first also notice here the script uh, you know by design it's maintaining about 0.8 you know 80% of of a throttle and that's so that the craft has a little bit more wiggle room because as i said the faster it's going the less maneuverable it is by design over you know avoiding targets on land uh, so if you go a little bit slower it can make slightly sharper angles uh, to uh, follow the terrain and you're less likely to crash into something so we're 27 kilometers away and you'll see here as it reaches yeah oh, really the, these stops are kind of annoying as it, as it goes starts going over land so let's go directly above and you'll notice it starts going up okay you see the shadow over here and it is it has gone over this terrain here now once it goes above its max which is set at 425 475 meters above the uh, current terrain height it goes back down as you can see here going down 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 slowly going up there's another big hill up in front 21 kilometers out of the way and as the terrain goes up it goes up along with it it's fairly good now if suddenly there's a mountain right right in front of it going straight up it's probably going to smack into that mountain it's not going to because there is no forward finding radar here you know in fact there's no, nothing like that in the Kerbal operating system functionality at the moment uh, so it's, it's only looking at what is directly straight down uh, all right come on okay now it's nosing down again sort of flying a train um, another thing i've noticed with this particular script is that if your minimum altitude is below 200 there's some terrain uh, fairly frequently that it'll encounter that it's going to just you know crash and, and smack into it uh, 300 is fairly safe 200 is fine below 200 you're really taking risks so the last you know challenge for this script is there's a little bit of you know bay or something here so it's going to go down to water level when it reaches that and then have to come up Right, so we are now 13 miles away, or th sorry, 13 kilometers away, 13,000 meters. So, you know, it's a fairly small mountain hilly area that it went through, but um, still something. You know, these stops here, this is a definitely a memory leak. Um, and also, the, another thing about, about the strategy I use for this particular cruise missile script is that once it's in the pop-up phase, that is, it's, it's going high up above the... Uh, um, it's aiming at a target high up above the of um, aiming at an altitude directly high up above the target so that it sort of comes down at maybe a 45 degree angle at that point it goes through to 100% uh, throttle 
All right, so we are now eight kilometers out. So now 400 meters, you can see here. And now because I, I, I was fairly conservative for this demonstration, it doesn't have to go down low. I've gone down fairly low, set at 200 and even a little bit further low, lower. And uh, it has managed to navigate, although just barely, this, this sudden um, rise in hill. So now we are within five kilometers. You can see it went up to uh, max throttle. It is aiming at a point uh, 700 meters above the target. And, uh, and so, but we're, this is still, i still counting this as phase two. And then phase three is set at, um, at one and a half kilometers out. It's gonna nose down and go six, f okay, 1.5. Right here, right at that pause. All right, now it's angling down and going to come straight at the target. So let's see how far off it is. All right, all right. Kapowie. Okay. Pause because of Kerbal stuff. It actually didn't aim directly to at the target. It aimed at a point 20 meters above the target, and it clearly destroyed it. That was, by the way, my MiG-23 model. And uh, there we go. Uh, if anyone, if any of you would like to see other videos similar to this, I, I think I will put out another video showing a better version, an improved version, a more perfected version of the cruise missile script. I also have another script that still needs a lot of work uh, that will do a, a ballistic missile attack at different points at, at pre-designated um, geo-coordinates on Kerbin. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that.